Yeah, I reckon, well, I mean, on the subject of um, uh, major military powers who are now in serious trouble, um, I think we should look, this is a very, uh, I came across this quite by accident. It's a, a very, in, and I'll probably write something on this because it's excellent. It is a very, very interesting paper written by an African academic called Ndongo Sambasilia. Um, it, it effectively, it looks at um, how, um, it looks at all of the, the coups that have occurred in um, West Africa in, in recent years, which I think we've, we've discussed on the show before. Um, Alex, Alex has done some fantastic work, work on this in the, in, in the past. That, yeah, that basically there have been a slew of military coups in, in the, the France's quote unquote former empire, which is to say parts of Africa, which are still effectively economically and politically dominated by France, that have brought to power very, very popular um, sovereignist, anti-imperialist um, hunters, and like you know, there you have all of these um, uh, Western leaders who are saying like, "Oh, this is like a slide into the the, the darkness of the sixties and the seventies when there was you know almost like weekly um, coups in Africa, and this is democratic backsliding." And actually, um, this paper makes the case that these are ac uh, it, 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 much more accurately described as victories for people power, um, uh, which are accelerating the total collapse of French imperialism in Africa. And it it goes into some detail about how governments in um, <coughs> Mali, but also you know, Burkina, Burkina Faso um, uh, uh, <coughs> and um, the Central African Republic, um, they are moving towards creating joint economic structures. They are moving towards creating joint military structures. Uh, they are, again, much like the resistance, collaborating in every um, conceivable field and doing so explicitly on anti-imperialist lines they are doing this to get rid of their european overlords and there is a very very interesting um uh, th th it's chock full of all of these quotes which like i i i had never come across before but just to give you an example there is this i mean just the the, the level of just delusion and, and uh, 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 of these people is quite extraordinary it quotes um uh general le, le Conte, a former french army chief of staff who declared in april this year what we europeans have in common is the mediterranean and africa this is where our destiny is at stake we have an obligation as europeans to return to africa to help restore the state and bring back administration and development it's not china russia or wagner group that's the now former um, russian mercenary uh, company where there are statues um, all over africa of, of wagner fighters because they helped um, local resistance movements um, fend off um, often you know, her horrendous genocidal attacks by western backed islamist um, Islamic fundamentalist factions. Um, yeah, it's not China, Russia or Wagner who are going to provide lasting solutions to the very great difficulties facing these African countries and their people. I mean, it's difficult to know where to start with like what's a completely insane and pompous and, and uh, it, it, it just, uh, I mean, this is like 19th century imperialism barely dressed up for the 21st century. They're literally saying that Africans are stupid and backwards and can't govern themselves and depend on Europe to govern them. And the resolutions aren't coming from Russia, which is gaining in popularity across the continent. There are free lessons provided by the Russian government for Africans to learn Russian. There's been a huge uptake in that. It's, yeah, yeah. Um, it's not China, which is building like infrastructure all over the continent and is helping these countries become rather than merely just... Um, uh, repositories of, of raw resources for the West to pilfer at, um, uh, at low, low cost rates and then profit from. Um, they're actually assisting these countries to you know, make their own things um, and, 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 and get them out of uh, re uh, repressive and fundamentally imperialist and colonial um, uh, economic and political structures like ECOVAS, Alex. Um, you know, it's not it, it, it's not it's not China and Russia that's help, help, helping the Africans. It's the people who enslaved them and butchered them and have raped and pillaged their continent for centuries. They're, yeah, they're, they're the ones mean, that are going to help, right? So, and so this uh, this paper identifies nine countries that have recently undergone uh, coups, for lack of a better term, and yeah. uh, shifted. Uh, with those coups, they're not just their government, but their geopolitical 
uh, alliances. Um, mm. So they've gone from from being allied with the United States and France and other European powers to being allied with Russia and China. Um, this has, I mean, the most famous example was Niger, which you and I co-authored a, a oh, yeah. report on, um, revealing uh, that the U.S.-backed president of the country, who was the chairman of ECOWAS at the time, uh, was and was plotting to invade Niger, um, in oh, yeah. which would have sparked a regional war, was in fact uh, a former money launderer for a heroin gang in Chicago. Um, that was mm. uh, based off of reporting done years and years ago by um, David Hundayan, an excellent uh, African reporter whom I would uh, urge all of our audience to mm. to follow. But this paper, it says, the French-speaking African countries referred to, this ar- to in this article are the 16 belonging to the historical franc zone. These are the countries that still use or once used the CFA franc, the colonial currency created in 1945 and which is still under the legal tutelage of the French treasury. So mm. these, these countries are, I mean, their currency is a relic of the Fran- Fran- France's mm. colonial era that exists today. This was something which uh, you identified as a key source of the problems or of the uh, unrest so to speak, all the way back, uh, that was uh, last summer um, mm. when, when you did that. Um, there was some, uh, there, there's a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of, uh, there was a lot of um, Western groaning about the influence of uh, Wagner Group. Um, so, mm. I mean, this this uh, article is from um, the in-house magazine of U.S. Africa Command. So this is a U.S. military publication. And what's it saying here? It says that uh, the Wagner Group has replaced France as the main foreign security force in the former French colonies of Mali and the Central African Republic. So France is being given the boot and uh, being re- was being replaced by Wagner. Uh, as a security partner, because these regions um, have been dealing for a number of years with uh, the insurgencies of, uh, as you said, Islamic fundamentalist uh, Salafis, um, historically aligned with um, the kinds of groups that the United States and Saudi Arabia have been uh, supporting in their efforts efforts to reshape the Middle East. Um, there was also uh something i something which you found quite a while ago in the the discord leaks which i would bring yes. up for those who don't remember the discord <clears throat> leaks were leaks from the pentagon um which were uh highly damning um not really they were obtained by media in full but n- never released in full or reported on in full and mm. one of them here is quite illuminating west slash slash Central Africa, France likely to struggle to achieve security goals in West and Central Africa. France will probably face significant challenges in implementing its forthcoming strategy for West and Central Africa, which the intelligence community expects will aim to counter growing anti-French public sentiment, bolster France's waning influence, and mitigate migration flows to Europe. France will probably seek to achieve these objectives using a smaller less visible French military presence and more partnership with those government militaries. So what's happened here is that Africans in the former French colonies Mm -hmm. have woken up to the oppression that they've been facing for so long, have banded together and and decided to do something against it. And this is being blamed on basically Russian propaganda. Uh, If you go to websites like Reuters, you see an endless slew of articles, which, you know, basically say, oh, everyone's pissed off at France. And the reason is Russia. It's not because, you know, they're using a currency invented in 1945 and controlled by the French treasury. Um, It's because of Russian propaganda. Um, So there, there is a, a serious tide shift here. Uh, and I, you know, I think one, another one of active measures goals, long-term goals is to continue to report from, uh, let's call it Africa's coup belt, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that, yeah, that the, 
we um alex and i last summer we reported on the uh, the planned invasion of uh, uh, uh <clears throat> Um, uh, of countries of in ECOVAS that, that this is the um, what's the what's the what, what's the full uh, oh, cool. um, a- acronym oh yeah sorry it's the economic community of West African states and like I mean we got um, overnight um, half the population of uh, West Africa began following Alex and I on Twitter and we were like we're the, but, uh, they're still there so uh, they go, thanks a lot guys your, your support means everything to us so that genuinely um, that like yeah that, I mean it, it's just quite remarkable that this continues to exist and it never get I mean I, I got a lot of people writing to me saying like you are the first journal like western journalist i've ever seen like mention the existence of this it's completely insane yeah. um the 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 um the, uh, the, the, the the france's economic domination of africa so effectively it it uh, it the, the, being part of this structure allows paris to to dictate what governments can and can't and do and don't do and it means that african countries at present they can't they they can uh, it's very expensive for them to export to anyone um bar france and the wider european union and it's very very difficult for them to buy anything from anyone apart from uh, uh, the Europeans. It's like forced dependency, which is, yeah, I mean, this is classic, you know, colonialism. Um, and I mean, to give you an example of this, I, I, I forget the exact figures, but I think it's something like the global coffee industry, and of course, Africa is, is, is where most of the world's coffee comes from. It is about two hundred billion in size, uh, dollars in size, like every single every single year, and and like about one percent of that. It, it is um, distributed in Africa. Like they profit to the tune of like one billion or, or uh, a year from this huge um, uh, global industry because it's the countries that package and sell the coffee that are making money. Like the the uh, the, the 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 origin countries where, where this is being harvested from see almost nothing. And as I mentioned, China is now equipping these countries with the infrastructure and the technology um, to be able to start making their own things, which is a huge threat to um, Western hegemony in Africa. Um, which you know is it, it is a, a legacy of blood and rape and torture and um, yeah, and misery. Um, and yeah. Um, and, and I th- think that as as this excellent paper, which I I mean it's it's free it's open access, um, and I'm hoping to get David and uh, Ndongo on the show at some point to talk about this because it's really really important stuff. That yeah, that effectively people all over um, Africa are very robustly rejecting um, Western um imperialism now and the, the these uh, ever so frightening governments in burkina faso and mali and elsewhere which are talked up as these brutal um uh, military hunters are really popular and then when they do stuff like ban western media there are people in the streets cheering yeah, yeah. And, and, and and to to remind you of that quote from the from, from the general um yeah uh, actually you know we need to step in here and um, uh, restore restore um balance to the force uh because of China and Russia's destabilizing disinformation i mean it's just it, it is it is beyond a joke really but it's important it's still nonetheless important to document this because this is actually what the people who rule the west think they are still in that mindset. They're on this civilizing mission that they're, they're, they have this white man's burden um, to bring yeah. democracy and, and Western values to Africa. Well, um, they've had centuries of that and they don't want it. And they are, you know, they are they are voting with their feet and also in many cases now voting with AK-47s to boot the Westerners out. Um, long may this continue, <laughs> I, th- I think. So again, tentative uh, cause for optimism. Yeah, I mean, I would just add as as a closer um, that, you know, in a lot of these African countries, which, you know, have not had, uh, you know, a, a change of government uh, as these uh, nine have, um, but are still uh, nonetheless seen as not sufficiently pro-West, you see that these activist groups, these NGOs are that are, you know, leading protest movements um, to change their government to a more friendly pro-Western government, you see that they're getting funding from the same, you know, actors. It's the National Endowment yeah. for, for <clears throat> Democracy. It's the uh, Open Society Foundation of George Soros. It's it's uh, the long arm of Piero Midiar. 
Um, so you mm. can see that like all of these uh, entities which have, um, you know, caused trouble in other regions such as, you know, Eastern Europe, Latin America, mm. they very much have their hands uh, dirty in Africa as well. So it's, mm. it, you know, let's let's not forget about about that uh, region of the world. I would also add that, like, you know, um, they say that they're, you know, this is about a, a backsliding of democracy. Well, mm. in countries like the Ivory Coast, you know, you can, they, they've been, they've arrested people for waving Russian flags. So, I mean, that sounds like free speech is just as tolerated there as it is in Germany. Um, yeah. So, you know, yeah. It's, it, as, you know, it's, it, this is not about, don't, ever let them tell you this this is ever about democracy it's oh, it's yeah. about social control and ec economic dominance yeah i mean i think that it as well that like we hear we hear that that phrase backsliding i mean we hear we've, we've been hearing it a lot about central and eastern europe too because central and eastern europe has um i mean this is a region that um is historically eastern leaning um it is a, a <clears throat> Uh, a territory which has enormous historic, cultural, economic, or had um, economic ties with Russia uh, for a very long time, and it, the the US has had a um, ever since the fall of the Berlin Wall has had an ongoing um, mission to try and impose um, pro Western, uh, pro privatization, pro quote unquote free market economic. Um, and extreme social liberalism um, on a region which is just about the opposite there, um, and that people are increasingly rejecting this. Um, you know, Georgia is a great example. In 2003, the US overthrew their own puppet, Edward Shevardnadze, who was very pro Western, and replaced him with an even more pro Western um, puppet, the brutal um, Mikhail Saakashvili. And recently, the government there has passed legislation in order to try and protect themselves from destabilization by NED funded um, organizations by passing a law um, to uh, compel its, uh, uh, foreign funded organizations to, compel, uh, to, to publish their uh, sources of income. And this is referred to as democratic backsliding by leaders in the US, which was the first country in the world to pass a Foreign Agent Registration Act. Um, and Europe, which is planning to do the same. Um, so it, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a phrase yeah, democracy, that we're hearing a lot. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Democracy is when there's no free speech and, 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 uh, yeah. and no transparency. That's democracy. Yeah, yeah, and I think that, 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 that this just just to close out this section, I think that, that the the the, pa the, the, the the this paper makes like um, uh, uh, the repeated reference. I mean, it's it's really excellently written, and it's he he refer he he refers to the kind of democracy that was allowed in and encouraged in Africa by U.S. and European leaders um, for decades is is ritual legitimacy in the exercise of power, as in, well, you can vote for hand-picked puppets who do not serve your interests and do not represent your views or wishes in any way and that's democracy and and it is a rejection of um the the, the uh this kind of um myth mythical representation of a quote-unquote liberal democratic system in fact, actually, it's far more democratic because these these again ever so frightening military hunters that you know there is we, we need to take some form of action against them um, uh, actually represent their the the interests and wishes of their populations. Yeah, R remarkable yeah, as, as as opposed to real democratic leaders like the former heroin dealer Bola Tinubu slash president yeah. of Nigeria. Um, or, okay, Kamala, so or, Kamala Harris, or Kamala Harris, who is literally saying, I will tell you what my policies are after I become president. <laughs> right. right. Hey, everyone. Um, if you enjoyed this video or, or any of our other content, uh, please give us a follow on Twitter or subscribe to us on YouTube. It will help us beat the algorithm oligarchs. Thank you.